The fantasy news must flow. Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to another episode of Fantasy News. I am your disheveled goblin host, Daniel Green, and today we have an interdimensional beam of fantasy news that I'm going to force into your nose, into your brainal canal, and have you inhale because this is the most important show on YouTube, and you know it. And the first story we're gonna go ahead and get into today is the random little batch of Wheel of Time news I've already mostly covered, so let's just not spend too much time on it. First up, we had our first look at the Shadow Spawn drop. If you'd like to know my full thoughts on the matter and the inclusion of Trollic Booty, check out the video right there. And then we had another Wheel of Time drop featuring Loghain, and this did confirm many things we pretty much already knew due to the showrunner talking about this directly, and that is that Logan's character will be played up for season one of the show. I actually really like his character, so I don't see this as a problem. The only thing that seems to be causing confusion within the fan base is why is he looking at Matt here? That's... But we don't know the context, could be highly edited, who knows? And then finally, the newest version of Eye of the World has been dropped. That's right, the book has been updated from Orbit, and they are encouraging you to pick up their show version of the cover. And well, here are my thoughts. All right, it's a printed on sticker, so it's at least not the kind that you're gonna peel off and it's gonna ruin your cover. It's extremely glossy. And it's a floppy that's a floppy spanky boy. It's a wide paperback and it's a perfectly normal version of the Wheel of Time aside from this cover. It's definitely not the worst live action cover I have ever seen for something like this. Obviously there are so many live action covers that are just like a screenshot of the show, which I've even made jokes about here on the channel. This does seem to be a custom made shot, or at least it's an extremely well chosen frame of the show. We don't know if it's in the show or not because we haven't seen the show. I in general would just say go for a regular edition of Eye of the World with original art on it. The Wheel Time series isn't known for having the best cover art, but I just, I just don't like live action covers that much. Though the Wheel of Time logo does look pretty good. It's interesting how much text they've managed to fit here. It's Robert Jordan, Wheel of Time, Amazon Prime video, The Eye of the World, international bestseller. That's a lot. I, this is gonna look, yeah, this looks a little bit messy, actually. I would just go with a regular Eye of the World. This is fine for being a promotional tool that it is. Next news. Late night, last minute fantasy news cut in because I'm gonna bring you the news as up to date as possible, even if it gives me carpal tunnel, which it's starting to do. But today, I need to go ahead and fill you in on the fact that we also got an additional Wheel of Time drop that covers so many of the things I've wanted to see from the show. But don't worry, if you don't care about Wheel of Time, just check the timestamps and move on on, you little, you little bugger Rabu. No reason to complain in the comment section. There's literally one button to push. But in this cut-in, we get looks of several things that are very important. Moraine channeling some more, white cloaks and some really drastic badass armor, a cavalry charging, and t Tom's hot! It's confirmed that Tom is hot. Blowing up Twitter of time, which is the hashtag you use for Wheel of Time on Twitter. People are going nuts over the fact that Tom's hot. We also see the one power cause a massive explosion, which made me go, <laughs> what's to come? And this braid flip? Holy shit! I was gonna say, the music, everything kind of really came together. I've been keeping my ear to the ground in terms of the positive or negative receptions that these Wheel of Time clips have been getting, and this is the most positively received by a good margin from what I can tell. And I think the music may be playing a bigger role in that than a lot of people are realizing because the music here is choice. But let's go ahead and transition to the next story. Ursula K. Le Guin is going to get her own award for fictional literature, and that just makes me a happy little boy. It'll be awarded for the first time in October of 2022, and I just, yes, it's an award of $25,000 and anything to honor Ursula K. Le Guin, who was unfortunately someone I find to be vastly underread in the newest generation of fantasy readers, makes me feel like there's still hope in this world. And before we cover one last story that makes me feel the opposite of that way, I'm just gonna take a moment to say I'm working extra hard tonight, so I'm gonna plug my book, Rebel's Creed. If you'd buy it, it'd mean the world to me. Sequel to Breach of Peace. I poured my heart and soul into this bad boy. Thank you so much. It appears that there will be Dune skins in Fortnite. 
last time I cared about Fortnite is because Kelsier was getting put in there and I've tried to play Fortnite. I didn't like it, but hey, seeing Timothy Chalamet and Zendaya go in there, that's just pretty cool. If they really want to perk my interest and make me play the game though, put a sandworm skin in there. I want to jump up and eat some people as a sandworm in Fortnite. Make it happen! But that's the last story of this late night cut in. Back to the regular fantasy news. Now I want to talk about something a little bit different here for fantasy news because I've been kind of following this behind the scenes kind of closely and now that it's officially released, the immediate reaction is, nah, I want to talk on it. So for those of you who don't know, Pierce Brown, the author of the Red Rising series, was also involved with the release of Blazing World, which looked to be a very surreal art house kind of exploration that the author helped write. Re-recording this spot because audio issues. I just wanted to bring attention to the fact that Pierce Brown did this. It looks like a really interesting kind of surreal sci-fi fantasy experience inspired by like Alice in Wonderland with a darker tinge. The reviews seem to be kind of mixed, but overall I think it's definitely worth checking out if you're a fan of Pierce Brown and want to support him. Although looking online, it seems really hard to find theaters that are playing this, so ah. Speaking of difficulty in theaters though, that's a great transition and you know it. The last dual box office results are in and it is a fabulous bomb. Oh my lord, this is one of the biggest bombs I have ever covered here on Fantasy News. The last duel had a reported budget of around $100 million, add in tens of millions of dollars more for marketing, which they do not include in those numbers, and you compare that to the first weekend haul of less than five million dollars and this is not looking to be the success Ridley Scott wanted it to which is surprising not only is Ridley Scott directing but the cast features names like Matt Damon Adam Driver and Ben Affleck and I've seen some people saying this is proof that only superhero movies are successful oh my god this is such a horrible horrible thing for cinema I disagree I've actually seen many projects outside of just the typical block blockbusters do exceptionally well or far beyond what they originally thought they could. In my opinion, it's a bit lazy and reductive to just chalk up every box office flop of the modern era to superhero movies or pulling everyone's attention. No, sometimes stuff just flops. Instead, I think this is more just proof of Ridley Scott's career, kind of just not having the same amount of fuel in the tank as it once did. He has had several years now of putting out mixed received films, I, I'd say the least. And the final addition to that, right now, due to the pandemic still ongoing, I feel like a lot of the people are going to the theaters a bit more like cautiously. They need something they really know to draw them in, hence why I think some stuff with IPs that are well known behind them are still performing fine, not exceptionally well. And then having something that people just don't know, it's like, why would I risk going to a theater right now? This isn't Marvel or an IP I know from a story that's being adapted, it's just something that's based on historic events. Eh. But let's move on to future possible flops that I hope certainly aren't. And that is around the fact that a trailer has dropped for The Tragedy of Macbeth, another A24 film. And as a dude bro film fan, of course, A24 trailer made me immediately go, yeah, I love their shit. And this seems to be right in my alley of Shakespearean fantastical storytelling. Oh yeah, it's pretentious and it looks so well because oh, cinematography. But then again, I'm the guy who loved the Green Knight and so many people did not. So it's up to you whether or not you think this is exciting. Links, of course, in the description down below. I get that A24 definitely makes a type of cinema that is not everyone's favorite, but I'm just so happy they exist and they're putting out these weird ass projects they do. Lamb? Oh, give me the lamb. But before we move into the how low can Harry Potter go, news? A quick word from today's sponsor. Campfire, I, I love you. You've helped me over these last years to build a fantasy empire envied by the galaxy. Millions now serve us due to the lure of your robust feature set. Timeline managers, character organizers, language creation, it's all there, but I believe you've taken me as far as we could go. <laughs> And here, on this day, Campfire Blaze dies. And in its place, Campfire Writing shall help me lead the Goblin Empire into a new era of victory. With this new rebranding, we shall rule this galaxy with an iron fist. Resistance is futile. 
to join with the Goblin Campfire Army. Check out the links in the description down below. Refusal to do so shall be taken as hostile action. But speaking of the opposite of A24 in terms of entertainment, another smooth transition, you gotta love it. We also had a trailer drop for a Harry Potter Cartoon Network collaboration titled Harry Potter Hogwarts Tournament of Houses. It seems to be a game show where people get to be quizzed on Harry Potter based on which house they're a part of. And this is going to be for our entertainment. So the Harry Potter franchise has reached a point of laziness where the content they're putting out is you better fucking know our shit. God, why? Why does Harry Potter's money grubbing continue to surprise me? Because this is like the most low effort thing a fantasy franchise could possibly put out. This is somehow lower effort than their terrible mobile games that are just based around microtransaction. Open up wide and accept J.K. Rowling's corporate schlock, you f Okay, I took that. I took that too far. I'm sorry. Um, I'm I'm sure it'll be a good time, and it's hosted by Helen Mirren. So open your wallets and take our half-ass corporate shit. nostalgia. <laughs> artistic integrity on full display. And for fans of the comic book series, Why the Last Man, I have very disappointing news. The show is not going to be renewed for a season two over at Hulu. This is a adaptation I have been following for so many years. And it's a victim of so many problems of its production, it seems. And now it's done. I've been hearing about a Why the Last Man adaptation since well before I started Fantasy News. And it's finally out, and it seems to have universally either been forgotten or just not that well enjoyed by fans. Its reviews have been mixed, and now Hulu's saying it's done. And just God. But in the two final pieces of fantasy news we're gonna cover here today, both of them are Elden Ring related. So the first major drop here is the fact that Elden Ring had some footage leaked online and the intelligent people went, yeah, this game's clearly months away from being done. Let's not judge the final product, but some things look okay and that's that. And then a bunch of other people looked at an unfinished game and made harsh judgments. And it's like, it's, it's not done. If you looked at Vincent Van Gogh's Starry Night when he was only like 80% done with it, it, would, it wouldn't it would be Starry Night. So, f***ing chill. This isn't me saying it'll be good. This isn't me saying it'll be bad. This is me saying it's not a final product. I saw some things I like. I saw some things that need work. And I'm going to walk away. It's the same reason I wouldn't watch like a movie that's not done in editing before I reviewed it. But distracting people from that leak news, I actually think this might have been dropped to try and pull people away from the attention of that. The game will officially now be released February 22nd of 2022, which we've had some people being like, see, the game's gonna be the next cyberpunk. It's gonna be so bad. I don't think it's near there, but I also don't support like pre-ordering games. So why don't you just wait till it's done and judge things by a case by case basis. And to the one guy on Twitter, I saw being like, we bullied them successfully since the leak happened to make them announce delaying the game. That's not how anything works. They didn't decide to delay the game because a couple people on Twitter saw leaked early test footage and got mad about it. And then within like an hour, just to suck. How, how do people think the world works and how do people think they make such important things? I'm so confused. Anyway, let's end the news now. But that is the last story we're gonna cover here today. I personally, after playing Dark Souls 1 and 3, am very excited for Elden Ring and I'm excited to see a release date. Hopefully it lives up to the hype. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here and have a good one, y'all. Peace. And of course, I'd like to record a special shout out to my latest high tier Patreon, Jack Maestri. Thank you so much.